Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Yuri Simbaev. Uh, I'm a sociologist uh, and I am a PhD candidate at Eurasian National University in Astana. Uh, I'm very happy to be here again uh, and uh, uh, to participate in this great discussion and uh, very appreciate Marlin and Noah for this opportunity. Uh, today uh, I'll be talking about violent extremism in Kazakhstan. Uh, I will provide some uh, review uh, of this topic and uh, uh, we'll tell a uh, little bit about uh, our findings and research in this Kazan. Uh, so, uh, if to look at the official statistics, uh, uh, we have uh, manifestations of uh, domestic violent extremism and uh, uh, so-called external uh, extremism. Since 2013, almost uh, 500 people have left Kazakhstan uh, to the territory of Syria and Iraq. Uh, and uh, if to talk about domestic violent extremism, during the last seven years there have been uh, 16 attacks. About 100 people died. Uh, and since uh, 2011, more than 800 people have been convicted under articles of extremism and terrorism. Uh, these uh, figures may sound scary, but according to international estimates, uh, Kazakhstan is in a group of uh, countries with a low impact of terrorism. Uh, according to the Global Terrorism Index, uh, the level of the risk of terrorism in Kazakhstan is about uh, 3 points out of 10. Uh, this is comparable to the level of uh, countries such as Canada and Australia. Uh, the United States of America, for example, is at uh, 62nd uh, place with a score of 5.2 points. Uh, but uh, uh, an interesting point is that the number of convicts on articles of extremism and terrorism in Kazakhstan uh, is steadily growing every year. Uh, for example, in 2017, uh, more than 250 people are sentenced to prison. This is uh, two and a half uh, times higher than in 2012, uh, when the greatest number of violent acts uh, were committed. And uh, my question is, does this mean that uh, the threat, threat of violent extremism in Kazakhstan uh, has increased? And uh, if so, what is the reason uh, for that? And uh, to seek the answer to this question, I offer to look at the local context. Uh, uh, and uh, a very good case uh, is Veskazran and Sakpaev, uh, little mining towns at the center part, central part of Kazakhstan. Uh, in 2016, uh, I conducted field research there. And the goal of research was to identify the key social risks uh, of the region including the risk of violent extremism. Uh, we conducted interviews uh, with uh, local authorities, uh, civil activists, and uh, we uh, did a series of focus groups with uh, citizens. Uh, and uh, uh, by the time of the research, uh, Liz Kazlan and Satpayev uh, had already percepted as incubators or hotbeds of jihadists. Uh, for example, uh, if we talk about uh, Belgium and the violent extremism in Belgium, uh, we uh, uh, often uh, mention uh, Molenbeek district, and uh, the similar case is just Kazan and Satpai for Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, there was unofficial information that these cities produced more jihadists than any other cities in country. Uh, but the estimates about the number of recruited people uh, vary greatly from 100 to 250. Uh, local experts confirmed the urgency of the problem of violent radicalization in the region and uh, the main threat was the religious community which was uh, called in different ways uh, Salafis, Takfiris, Wahhabis, uh, destructive sect and so on. Uh, and uh, as you can see from the picture, the image of this uh, community was extremely demonized and uh, very, was very contradictory. Uh, 
the collective portrait of the members was distinguishedly uh, with, with uh, was described uh, uh, by brutality, aggression, and danger. Uh, and the community uh, itself was called big and very close. Uh, and according to another popular opinion, the community ha had a high level of shadow incomes. Uh, and uh, uh, according to research, uh, the main activity of all this community was trading cell phones, products, and clothes. Uh, they have a network of shops in that pipe. And interesting that people spoke of them with gratitude because of the lowest prices in the city. Uh, so in some cases, uh, this uh, community uh, uh, described as a honest and a fair entrepreneurs. Uh, in the context of Reskazan, uh, local experts easily discussed uh, why the radical ideology became popular there. Uh, two main factors uh, were mentioned. The first, uh, the re religious and uh, ideological factor, uh, uh, which was associated with the influence of the spiritual leaders of radical ideology, uh, who often came to the region and uh, propagate uh, so-called non-traditional Islam. Uh, the second factor, uh, socioeconomic, uh, uh, was about uh, difficult living condition in the city, uh, and uh, mentioned uh, the problems of unemployment, uh, low earnings, and uh, lack of pros prospects uh, for youth. Uh, if the first factor was uh, difficult to verify, uh, then there was no doubt about the significance of the second one. Uh, this Kazan is a typical mono city uh, where the standards of living uh, is directly determined by the position of the city forming enterprise. And according to the data, every fourth economically active, active resident of the city worked at Kazakhmys. Uh, Kazakhmys uh, is a uh, city forming uh, inter uh, enterprise. Uh, and uh, the situation uh, in the enterprise was getting worse the past few years. Uh, the copper production is decreased, and uh, uh, Kazakhmys practically doesn't participate in the social and economic development of the city. And the, almost all respondents noted a drop in the standard of living in the city uh, over the past 10 years. Uh, if to, um, to local use, uh, they faced uh, serious challenges. Uh, there was a little chance of finding a job on their own. Uh, to get a job at an enterprise or a government organizations, uh, youngsters need to pay a bribe. Uh, and uh, if to compare with uh, rural areas, Local communities had weak social ties. Uh, these circumstances cause high deprivation among local youth. Uh, they, have, they are more likely to experience a cold uh, in between and marginal condition. And thus, we found out uh, three key drivers of radicalization uh, blurred and the identity exclusion from the community and the lack of purpose. Uh, but these are, uh, these are the factors that lie on the surface uh, and uh, their influence on radicalization uh, is widely described in literature. And uh, uh, I guess that uh, there is another factor uh, that is uh, very important for violent radicalization. Uh, this is how uh, local youth communities are organized. According to uh, my research, <coughs> uh, radical ideology is uh, easier to spread where the high level of uh, delinquency and uh, where youth are more criminalized. Uh, in the post-Soviet countries, uh, the criminal subculture has always been more popular in industrial uh, cities uh, and the territories where, uh, which were close to prisons. Uh, and uh, Rizkazgan in this regard uh, was a typical case. Uh, in conversations uh, with local youth, uh, it was easy to identify identify a specific speech, jargon, and the manners of behavior. There were also uh, such patterns as uh, specific um, perceptions of honor, uh, defense of one's uh, own, and the perception of policemen, uh, and the romanticized image of those who oppose the system uh, or mainstream. However, uh, I uh, think that this is not enough to make the risk of jihadism real. Uh, political and uh, or administrative factor uh, uh, is 
an important part of the uh, whole picture. Uh, so, uh, after a series of terrorist attacks, uh, we see in Kazakhstan uh, the process of dehumanization and delegitimization of followers of non traditional Islam uh, or Salafis. Uh, in the mass uh, uh, consciousness, Salafism has uh, become uh, synonyms of uh, radicalism and extremism, and this led to discrimination of uh, representatives of this community. Uh, people uh, face difficulties at work and in uh, everyday life. Uh, for example, uh, in Jis uh, uh Salafis excluded from the mosque after they were accused of following the wrong Islam. Uh, wrong Islam. In other words, uh, uh, we see that uh, countering uh, violent extremism uh, replaced uh, to uh, countering non-traditional Islam. Uh, so my point is that um, uh, so let's look at this um, graph. Uh, uh, this approach, uh, which I mentioned, manifested itself as an intensification of criminal persecution for religious beliefs. Uh, for, so you can see uh, uh, the diagram where I. Uh, divided the crimes related to extremism into two groups. Uh, first, uh, uh, so uh, uh, extremism articles uh, consist uh, more than 20 articles, uh, and uh, I divided them into two groups. First, uh, non-violent uh, articles. It's the uh, red line. Uh, it's uh, criminal. It's activities like. Um, Provoking uh, social or religious strife, uh, uh, participation in the prohibited religious organizations, uh, or uh, propaganda or uh, propaganda of violence, uh, and uh, uh, violent acts uh, uh, related to uh, terrorism acts uh, and uh, participation in the activities of terrorist organizations. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, the number of uh, non-violent convicts uh, is rapidly increasing last year. Uh, and uh, 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 in mass media, uh, a lot of uh, uh, described cases when uh, people are detained uh, for propagation of Salafism or uh, specific posts uh, on social networks, social media. Uh, so, uh, what are the consequences of this situation. Uh, first of all, uh, we see uh, the formation of a climate of intolerance and uh, mistrust between citizens on a religious basis. And uh, mm, uh, the second is uh, isolation of the followers of non non, uh, unconventional or non-traditional Islam. And uh, 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 this situation uh, led uh, to uh, a high number of radical uh, uh, jihadist fighters uh, in Kazakhstan and specifically uh, in these uh, areas like uh, Dispazgan, Sadbay uh, and uh, I think that uh, in, um, now we have a situation where the threat of uh, violent extremism uh, still exists uh, and uh, uh, there is a big influence of the political or policy or administrative factors uh, so I will stop there and uh, hope that uh, we'll have, uh, if you have a question, please, uh, uh, please ask me. Thank you very much.